Good morning. Christ is risen. All right, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to worship today on the second Sunday after Easter. We're not just in the season of Easter. We are worshiping after Easter Sunday, naming us as Easter people. And it's good to be here. Thank you for joining us, those of you who are online. It's good to have you along with us, too. My name is Jeff Tengestall. And um, if you ever have any questions about uh, All Saints or if you are joining us as a guest, please make yourself known to anyone or to me. Be good to, to meet you. Thanks for being here. A couple of things that I want to lift up. There's a congregational meeting in two weeks, and that's uh, for approving funding for the Roof Project. It needs a congregational vote. So please, I'm sure it wouldn't last long, just please stick around after that service. And then new Bible study starting tomorrow for men and women. So now you have a couple of options if you can make it. Um, Thursday and also tomorrow. Um, and so please consider that as an opportunity to grow in your faith as an Easter disciple. Then you may have noticed in the bulletin um, an announcement about locking the doors. That decision was made after kind of some difficult times like Lakewood Church and down in Houston, I think, Joel Osteen. That was a problem down there. And also because we're on such a busy a free with a thoroughfare right out here it was decided to lock the doors during worship just for safety precautions and um, I give that as a heads up a verbal announcement so that uh, hoping that you can understand that decision for now and it is being reviewed by a new safety task force that is going to be looking at a lot of security things in order to keep um, all of us and our kids safe here during worship and during the week and all of that too. Um, it will be reviewed and it will be continued to uh, considered, um, but it kind of means then um, if you're used to coming at 9 oh, I don't know when, <laughs> but if you're used to coming a little bit late, please be mindful of getting here before the door gets locked at 9 o'clock. <laughs> if I see you through the window here, I'll open the door for you, okay? <laughs> it's a long hike around, I know, but <laughs> I'll look for you. <laughs> And we regret any difficulties that may cause anybody. Um, sometimes life is like that in our day and age. I invite you to please rise now for the call to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter, and our joy. Amen. Let's turn to the font as you are able. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Look, here is water. Alleluia. Let us join in the gathering hymn.
please join me in prayer. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Please rise. Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, but Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to know and believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated, and boys and girls, come on up here, okay? Come up and let's hang out together for a little bit. Here comes one, here comes another. Good morning. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? Oh, let me see those shoes. Very classy. Very cool. Nice job. Oh, come on up and have a seat. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, a lot of kids are going to be in Sunday school. Right. Look. One, two, three, four. Ten zillion. Right? Ten zillion kids. Who? 13. 13. Are you sure? I'm sure you're sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you did a good job and you counted you. Um, I want to know who has a favorite sports team. What's a favorite sports team that you have? Who do you say? Football. Football. Which team though? Which one do you say? Packers. Everyone raise their hand if they were a Packer fan. Raise your hand if you're not. <laughs> okay, you can go. <laughs> you're a Packer fan. All right. I'm a Packer fan. Have you ever seen in a football game or a basketball or a baseball game where they do something called the wave? Have you heard that? Where one part of the people start going like this, and then the next person goes like this, and it goes all around the stadium. Have you ever seen that? No. It's called the wave. Have you? In, they, you've seen that then, but not maybe in sports, but in something else. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Well, I'm going to ask you to learn the wave, and then we're going to help these people do the wave. So everyone stand up. All right. And face me in a long line. All right. In a line like that. And what I'm going to ask you over here to do, you will start going like this. And then the person next to you goes like this, and then the person next to you goes like this until it goes all the way over here, okay? Can you do it too? Wave your hands like that. Okay, you start over here, and it keeps on going all the way over here. There you go, there you go, there you go. One more time, practice, and then we're going to teach them how to do it, okay? Whoa, good job, nice. I want to see the wave here now, okay? Starting over here with these young gals. And then we'll move through here, okay? On the count of three, high, low. They did it. Should we try it one more time? Okay, all right. High and low and high and low. Oh, you guys are great. You learned quickly. They learned well, didn't they? Okay, you can be seated for a second. Okay. I'm thinking high and low. What are the high times in your life? What things make you feel really good? Yeah. 
What's that? When you're really excited for something. I like that. What excites you? Low tag. Low tag? Yep. Oh. A bunny oh, a bunny kitty. Okay, that eats, sounds fun. Orange and green things like carrots. Oh, eats orange and green things that gives you... Cake. Nut, carrot cake. I love that too. <laughs> when you first got Snickers, that was a high for you. When you let your cat out of the barn? No, when we got a cat from a my kit. Oh, when you got a cat too. Wonderful. That's neat. That's exciting, isn't it? What else makes you excited? Yeah. Yeah, that's an exciting thing, isn't it? That's a high. How about someone else? What makes you excited? Playing flag football. I love to play football, too. Yeah. One more. Did you have something? When you go to your grandpa's, grandpa's house? Yeah, that's wonderful. That is so neat. One more. <laughs> that helps me to think about maybe things that make us low sometimes, too. You highs and lows, right? Okay. Sometimes your cat will give you scratches if you, light scratches, and it doesn't really hurt, and it's kind of playful. But what are things that make kids sad? What are things that make kids sad? Yeah. When your fish died. Yeah. How about you? When you lose low tag. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What are other things that make you sad or make kids sad? Hello? Yeah. And say it again. Hello. Yes. Yes. Very much so. Thank you. Uh, and you? When a pet or an animal dies? Yeah. Yeah. When a person you really love or someone in your family passes away and goes to yeah, when somebody passes away and goes to heaven. That's sad for us, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Another one? Another loved family member. Yeah, yeah. You guys have come up with some good examples of highs. Raise your hands. And lows. Do you think... Jesus is with you in both times? I think so. Like last Easter, Jesus was with you and with us. Because what happened? What was last Easter called? Yeah. And yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Last Sunday was Easter Sunday. And Jesus, what happened to Jesus on Easter Sunday? He rose from the dead, right? And we sounded, hallelujah. And then also today, yeah. Oh, no, you, you go ahead. Okay, that's all right. Oh, today, I just read a story. Disciples were kind of scared. Have you ever been scared? Yeah. Disciples were kind of scared because they didn't, really think Jesus had really risen from the dead. Maybe it was all a trick, or maybe they were the people were going to come and get them too. And so they were kind of scared. So that was a low for the disciples. Was Jesus with them? Yes. yes. Jesus was with them. Yeah. My sister Anna got high. That was based, based on the sidewalk. You went face first on the sidewalk. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. I didn't. <laughs> oh, that was that's too bad. But that would hurt, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I thank you for being up here today, and you've come up with some good answers. Yep. Your face scraped across the road, uh, the concrete, and you got a bloody nose. 
Is Jesus with us during those hard times too? Yeah, highs and lows, Jesus is with us. Let's bow our heads. Raise your hands. God, we thank you for Easter and loving, happy, high times. Lower your hands. And we are grateful and thankful that you are with us when we are scared or lose somebody we love or we get hurt. Thank you, Jesus. And everybody says, amen. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up. And if you're going to Sunday school, then just meet in the back there, okay? Thanks so much. I'm not through fifth grade. I'm only in 4K. 4K, not fifth grade, huh? <laughs> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Okay. It is not lost on me that the announcement I made earlier about locking the doors, huh, coincides with the disciples behind locked doors. <laughs> In fact, I had decided to make that verbal announcement days before I'd even looked at today's gospel lesson. <laughs> Truth be told, the Bible really doesn't speak to the matter of locking doors during worship. Today's gospel story might be the closest it gets. You can imagine deciding to lock doors during worship is really not an easy decision. We envision, envision churches to be places of welcome and inclusion and come on in and open doors. Yet in this day and age, it is necessary, unfortunately, that we have to be mindful of Safety, too. An age when hate-filled persons feel empowered to express their feelings with loaded guns. An age where current mental health resources don't adequately meet the needs of some persons who are on the edge. Here's why the doors were locked back then. A couple thousand years and a week ago, some of the disciples had seen the resurrected Lord that morning. And there had been shouts of alleluia and joy, a real high for them, as last Sunday was for us. In the evening, fear had taken hold of their hearts. Were they going to be next on the cross was running through their minds. Were they going to be accused of being followers of Jesus? Yet in the midst of that kind of low for them, there still was good news. Jesus was with them in that low time, just as Jesus is now present with us, whether the doors are locked or not. Present in the word that we heard, present in the table, the water, one another. Jesus is present. Back then, Jesus appeared among his closest friends, just as he appears to us. And he said to them, peace be with you. Shalom. And that's good news for people who are frightened. But then Jesus continues, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. What? You're sending us out of those doors? Yep. Not only that, Jesus says. But if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. In other words, you can't stay here. Just as the Father sent me, I send you now to forgive and love. Just like that. I forgive you, said the daughter of 70-year-old Ethel Lance to the 21-year-old man who murdered her mother in the Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church of Charleston. Maybe you remember that. Relatives of the nine Emmanuel Church victims stood up one by one by one in the courtroom offering forgiveness to Dylan Roof, who was accused of murdering their sons, their mothers, and their grandfathers. Even though the nation, in contrast, continued to call for justice and retribution, Alana Simmons, who was the granddaughter of 74-year-old retired pastor Daniel Simmons, she stood up next and she said, although my grandfather and the other victims died at the hands of hate, 
This forgiveness is proof that they lived and loved, and hate won't win. Reading that story again, I go, wow. There is no way on my own that I can ever muster that kind of mercy and forgiveness, I think. It's something that comes only with the breath of Jesus upon one's soul. Just like he breathed, as we heard in the story, on the disciples that Sunday evening, right? The power of the Holy Spirit gives us the courage to do something that Jesus sends us out to do that is so revolutionary that the rest of the nation, the rest of our community, even our friends and neighbors might shake their heads or frown, shake their heads in confusion or disagreement. Now, one disciple missed out on seeing Jesus and hearing his words that evening. Thomas. Thomas gets a bad rap, I think. He's called Doubting Thomas just because he said, unless I see, like the rest of you, unless I see the mark of the nails in Jesus' hands and touch his scars, I will not believe. I get Thomas, kind of. He's a concrete, real person kind of guy. It takes me back a week and a half ago. My wife and I had been on the road for 11, 12 hours. We pull up to Carl's Jr. in rural La Junta, Colorado. It's 8.45 p.m. The restaurant closes at 9. The speaker at the drive-thru says, please order when you are ready. Um, we'd like a double cheeseburger and a regular one. You'd like a double cheeseburger combo and a regular cheeseburger combo. No, 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 wait, just the sandwiches, just the sandwiches. Well, what comes with the combos? Oh, so one combo and two cheeseburgers. My wife yells from across the seat. She says, we don't want fries, that's all. One order of fries, the voice says. No, no. Finally, another voice gets on and says, how can I help you? I go, thank you. <laughs> That's when we realized we had been talking with an AI voice, an artificial intelligence voice instead of a real person. Get that. I like the real person better. <laughs> Thomas did too. I heard about a little boy who was frightened one night because there were thunderstorms all around, and he called out to his father from the bedroom, Daddy, I'm scared. Come here. His dad, who had kind of just settled in for the night and was hoping to get to sleep right away, told the little boy, Son, it's all right. God is with you in your room. Just go to sleep. You're okay. Moment of silence, and then the little boy shot back, Dad, right now, I need a person, a real person with skin on. <laughs> Thomas, he needed a real person with skin on. And he got it. So did those frightened disciples get what they needed by the presence of Jesus in a room behind locked doors. And in the presence of one another, for sure. And a lot of times... Hopefully, a lot of times, we get what we need here from Jesus in the presence that comes to us and from the real persons of one another who are God with skin on, each other. We get what we need to be incarnations of God with skin on outside of those doors. Jesus says, just as the Father sent me, I am sending you out there to be my skin on for others. How does that feel? Taking Jesus' call to heart, what's that feel like? Makes me fearful. I'm not always great at that being sent out. Years ago, I read a sermon by a pastor, Mark Hansen, who was the then presiding bishop of the ELCA. In the sermon, he talked about the disciples who had seen Jesus that Sunday evening. And they were behind locked doors, frightened, uh, fearful. They don't want to be crucified. Bishop Hansen asks the question, how many of us Christians lie awake at night, fearful that in the morning someone might accuse us of being followers of Jesus? He asks, if someone did accuse you of being a follower of Jesus, what evidence would they have to convict you? 
It doesn't really matter that the doors are locked right now. That'll work itself out. However, we decide to provide safety for the congregation at this time. What matters is what we real persons do after Jesus sends us out those doors. What signs will we show that we are followers of Jesus? What will give us away? Maybe it's forgiving someone who is unforgivable. Hmm. Courage to fight racism and sexism. A willingness to counter hate with love. Not always easy. The conviction not to be controlled by your calendar or social media. That's a big one, too. And give more attention to God's directions. A generosity that might exceed even your own parameters. That's a sign. Or inspiration to be God's skin on for one another and others as you do already. Those things matter. There's a movie that you can still find on television. I think you have to look it up on a streaming channel. My family used to watch it every Easter when I was a child. And it's based on a novel with the same title, The Robe. Have you seen The Robe? Some have, yeah. One of the main characters is Marcellus. He wrote letters to his fiancée, Diana, in first century Rome. And he told her about Jesus' teachings and about Jesus' miracles and the crucifixion and the resurrection. And finally, Marcellus informed Diana that he had decided to become a follower of Jesus. Diana replied in a letter she wrote back, Dear Marcellus, what I feared was that it might affect you. It is a beautiful story. Let it remain so. We don't have to do anything about it, do we? What's at stake? Listen, the risen Lord Jesus appeared to his disciples behind locked doors. And it says he also did many other signs which are not written in that Gospel of John. But what was written, and what I share with you today, and what you receive today in this place as we've gathered, they are written, shared, and given to you so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and that through believing, you and those out there may have life in his name. That's what it's all about, that you may have life in his name. That's what Jesus wants. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, sometimes we get glimpses of what life in your name means. Those are the highs. And we pray that they will sustain us during the lows, remembering that you are present with us when we are frightened or worried. Help us to be signs of your gracious love, forgiveness, and mercy in the world. Help this place continue to be a place that learns how to be skin on for God. All this we lift up in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join in our <clears throat> hymn of the day and please rise as we do that.
Jesus said to the disciples long ago, I say to you, the peace of the risen Lord be with you all. Please share that peace with one another in whatever way feels comfortable. God. We will continue with the offering. Please be seated as we move into our portion of uh, sharing what we have first been given. Thank you very much. What a joy. I invite you to please rise as you are able. Let us join in the offering prayer. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and that love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church and the world and all people who need to hear some good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you drew drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us, your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed, that we witness to your love, and that we bear signs of your everlasting forgiveness and mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all the things that are growing out there these days. 
Guide farmers and gardeners, arborists and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace. Your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide police and firefighters, paramedics and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace. Your children do cry out in their lows, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and other forms of oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, especially for Rick for a successful surgery and Yvonne for strength. We pray for Alex, who's battling brain cancer, and Judy. Pray for peace and aid for Palestine, Ukraine, Haiti, and Sudan. Healing for Wayne, Kathy, Agnes. We lift up in prayer a successful surgery for Randy and prayers of comfort for for Randy and the loss of his wife. And for Nancy and her family on the passing of her mother, and for Jody for, feel, for healing, and for all those in recovery, God of grace. Your congregations cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, church staff, administrators, volunteers, all who are part of your mission through the church all who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and abiding in your love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected Lord. Amen. We do remember that night before Easter when Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it for all to eat, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took that cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray as the people of God gathered on this Easter morn. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table when you come forward, starting with the center and then later from the sides. Receive the bread. I do have gluten-free wafers available. Receive the bread and then go to either side and receive a cup of wine or grape juice and place your empty cup into the bowl on either side. Come, all things are ready. Break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my faith to the rising sun. Let us 
Please rise as you are able and let us join in the prayer. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The God of resurrection power and the Christ of unending joy and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Let's join in singing this wonderful sending hymn. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Rejoice and be glad. Be Please 